Hey guys, it's TTL or Tiny Tom Logan. Tom, Tiny Tom, T-I-N-Y-T-O-M. Anyway, right, so is our first look at the Aorus X299 Gaming 7. Gigabyte board, they're kind of like moving into this Aorus branding now. So anyway, it's the X299 Gaming 7. Now the Gaming 7's always been a favorite because it kind of sits in the middle of the range it's not one of their mental expensive ones. It's not one of the cheap ones. You normally get a decent range of features on them. Anyway, there's lots for us to talk about. Lots and lots for us to talk about. Um, one of the main things on the back of the box that they talk about is the uh, uh, LED strips. Gigabyte do support RGBW, which means you get a fifth channel for a dedicated white. Cable mod do do kits. You can get some cheap ones on Amazon as well, should you be interested. But it's just got that fifth wire, which means that you can have a dedicated line. So you don't need to just go RGB. Obviously, if you want white lights, normally people would just buy a white dedicated light. But with this, you can have RGB and the white. But what it also can mean is um, the LED manufacturers can then have RGB UV and you turn on a UV rather than the white. There's loads of software going on with their smart fan and stuff. Um, uh, they've got some, they're saying that it's high-end audio components. We can see Japanese uh, capacitors there. USB DAC up. So if you're using a USB DAC on your desk, they have dedicated USB output ports for it and their adjustable voltage as well so that you can get your, the best from them. They're also saying, which we'll cover in a bit, that they've got long-life Duraplax solid capacitors dual armor ultra durable design as well triple so three m.2s one of them's got a thermal guard as well it's got dual killer networking um saber hi-fi on there with um Weimar high-end audio capacitors rear panel audio is up to 121 decibels for um, um uh, headphones as well so there's there's a lot of stuff going on. Oh, and they're also saying server class digital power design. Yes, lots of stuff. Anyway, when we open the box, and I have to admit, that to me was a laugh in itself, and I'll try to explain why. So, I've uh, got one of the older boards out, just so that you can see it's not one of the new, new ones. But when you lift the packaging up, they are blatantly using the same place to get their packaging from. Although despite it being a, some people might be trying to say that it's a coincidence, I don't think it's a coincidence because to be honest with you, Gigabyte just, yeah. Anyway, right, I just wish they would uh, get some initiative rather than copying anyone else. And it's only made even, even more funny when we take out the actual boards themselves and then we are met with pretty much the same sticker packs as well now like i said it could be the fact that they're using the um the same manufacturer and the same supplier to get this stuff done but if i'm honest they do so much where they kind of take a lot of ideas from everybody else because they think that's what people want and yeah this is just like oh my days have you literally got no original ideas for the love of god i love gigabyte but whoever decides on stuff like this sack them because they're just copying everybody else i mean come on for the love of right and the rant i know it's just a box so i'm not gonna talk about it anymore despite the fact that i think it's hilarious to think that someone got paid to go and find out who asus used it's just like it's ridiculous anyway right so we uh we will talk about this in a bit but this is a cable that you plug into the board and this is your direct LED cable. And essentially one of them does five volts, one of them does um, uh, 12 volts, and it's all actually kind of cool. Anyway, so that's what that is, or at least that's what I think it is because I can't really find anything in the box. It's the only thing that makes sense. The uh, IO shield at the back all lights up. I will show you the lighting on this and the board towards the end of the video. And then other stuff that we've got in there, you've got um, your five pin because it's obviously RGBW. Again, we will talk about that extension cables. You get four SATA cables and they're braided as well. Lovely, it's nylon braid by the way, it's not a soft braid. SLI bridge, you get a, um, a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth uh, antenna for the back. 
which is all lovely. You get your manual, your coaster, or your driver CD. Don't forget, if you end up watching this video later on, and the product's been out a while, like over a month, uh, make sure you go to the Gigabyte website and download your driver so that you get the most up-to-date ones. The driver CD, I've got this driver CD, you will get the exact same one, and I've had this before the products are even on the shelves. So the drivers do mature, and you need to make sure that you get the most up-to-date ones. You've got some uh, Velcro uh, cable ties there. They always come in handy. You've got some thermal probes, because there are thermal pinouts on the board. So you get a couple of thermal probes, and something else which I liked, which was kind of cool. We'll show you this again in a bit, but this is the cover that goes over the M.2 at the end. So if you were to ping one off or break one, then there's a spare one. So that is actually kind of nice. So, okay, so a good look at the board. We're gonna go all the way around it. So if there's anything that you're particularly interested in, don't forget you can pause and all that sort of thing as we're going around. I'll try and move around fairly slowly, but first things first, the board is all monochrome, it's all understated. Uh, it has got LEDs, which I'll show you in a bit, but they can be turned off, so this can be the look of your board if you want. So the main colours to pick out really is, uh, we've got the, the logo parts up here, the little silver flashes, and then really, the only other colour is coming from the steel reinforced PCR Express slots, and then around the memory. Now with the memory, if I zoom you in, they do have little channels in between, which do light up, should you wish. Anyway, I actually like the look of the, the steel in there. It does give it a nice color. But what we'll do is we'll go around the board. So we'll start up at this corner. Now the LED IO, that's for plugging in your um, rear IO shield. You've got system fan two there. Two eight-pin CPUs, although you know, just to be clear, you only need to use one. You've got um, uh, WRGB there, which is white, uh, blue, red, green. So RGB with a dedicated white channel. Then you've got CPU optional and CPU fan there. Round here, you've got another um, uh, that's power fan and pump, and then you've got a temperature probe sensor. Coming down a little bit further, don't forget I'm having to look at the board to see what um, is going on as well. We've got another fan header there. I'm looking to see what the name for that fan header is. And I'm struggling anyway. We've got a um, vertical USB 3, USB 3.1. When we come down a little bit further, you get the eight SATAs. And then there's another connector there. I think that's Thunderbolt. You've got an M.2 with a big metal cover stroke shield at the bottom of the heatsink. I think it's kind of cool the way it all kind of matches in and goes in. BIOS clear, I'm um, sorry, BIOS switch there, so you can switch between multiple BIOS. Another USB 3. Then you've got your, um, I call it an LED poster pinout, but it's like a fault finder LED, so you can, if it hangs, you can work out what the numbers are. The numbers are in the manual. Two more fans down at the bottom here. It's actually nice to see two internal USB 2s. I'm thankful of that because so many things connect to them now. But uh, if you're reading this, or watching this rather, and you're thinking to yourself, my board's only got one and I need more, you can get hubs that you add into these that multiply the ports. And then down at the bottom, you've got power switch, reset switch, overclock switch, and eco switch. Another RGBW connector, front panel audio, this connector here is actually kind of cool, um, and there's a wire in the box, and what that does is um, it's a direct LED header, and it gives you a direct out for 12 volts and 5 volts, which is all kind of cool. You've got the audio down the side, Jap Japanese capacitors there, and the Qigong capacitors there. We come along this, we've got another fan header there, and then if we come around the back, and zoom out a little bit. You can see we've got our gold-plated audio connectors, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, dual uh, LAN, uh, USB-C there. You also got your gaming panel up here, and also these can be used for DACs and amps if you want as well, because they've got slightly more power available to them. 
So yeah, it's all kind of nice. And then, that's a decent look around. The only other big things to talk about, as you, well, I said to you about the M.2 down here, there is an extra one here. You do need to keep in mind that it will cover up the uh, CMOS battery. It's a bit of a woo place, if I'm honest, to put a um, battery for the CMOS anyway, because your graphics card's always gonna cover it up. So if you've got water and you need to take the battery out, it's a bit of a pain in the bottom spot. You've also got, um, uh, four other slots for the PCI Express here, but what I would have to do is, um, when I review it, I'll have to try and work out whether all of these PCI Express slots go to the CPU or whether you do have one, which I'm assuming goes to the chipset, because uh, depending on the CPU that you get will depend on the uh, amount of CPU lanes that you get for these slots but then you also get up to 44 lanes from the uh, chipset as well as a mental amount of PCI Express lanes. But normally what you'll do is you'll have one of these slots. It would have normally have been shorter and that will feed from the uh, PCI Express. And what that means, if you put a sound card in or something like that, it won't then munch on your CPU lanes and mess your, uh, your graphics card co config up. Um, but I will find that out in the main review. Uh, if you're interested, you'll be able to go on the, by the time that I put this up, it should be, on the Gigabyte website, so you'd be able to download the uh, chipset layout and you'd be able to see whether which one of these lanes and stuff. So there'll be a PCI Express board diagram and you'll be able to work it out from there. Power around the socket, you can see that we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 capacitors there and I'm seeing 2, 4, 6, 8, 9 total, oops, I do apologise, 9 total choke on the other side so fair bit of power going on and I did notice around the back there is a very beefy I say back plate but support is probably the best word but I'm assuming that there are some electrical components underneath this as well so again in the full review I will um, take this off strip, see, does it get hot, all of that sort of stuff. And finally, a look at the lighting. I've made the room as dark as I possibly can do, and it is on a magic cycle because I have a uh, funky uh, demo cable that I can plug in to make the lights light up. So the section in the middle is just rotating through the RGB colors. The parts at the side, they're doing a more kind of like mental, uh, kind of like cycling but they're chasing the colors down as well so we can see that there this is kind of the old um, gigabyte lighting style with nothing funky going on but you'll be able to manually set these all that you like but these have got more of a motion thing going on obviously you'll be able to set them to static or to chase and to do the you know the the funky things like we're seeing here today and then around the back we've also got the lit um, IO shield that is mimicking the same colors that we're going on this one so these are the only odd ones out now I'm just going to assume that these are just a different type of LEDs down here but either way you can see what you've got you can obviously turn the LEDs off if you like um, I don't know uh, whether you'll be able to assign different zones or anything like that yet and until I um, do do the main review I won't be able to tell you because obviously there's no CPU in there I'm not allowed to um, power them up for these videos at all it's um, yes I'm skirting the NDA rules quite close but anyway so lighting yes full look at everything else yes full review will be as soon as possible um, or as soon as possible after NDA because I, I, I don't know what's going on with samples for CPUs or anything yet but we will see. But for now at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with our first look at the Gigabyte X299 Aorus Gaming 7.